Welcome to RTAF. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of RTAF Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Norris, and this is the 100th episode. That's right. Done 100 of these now. And it's a milestone I wanted to celebrate by having five guests on at once. You'll uh, you'll all recognize them. First, we got uh, former co-host, CIA operative John Speaker. And then there's Emily Kell. There's Crystal. Crystallize. That's her last name. Crystallize. First name Crystal, last name Crystallize. Uh, Morgan Mandela and Randall Roberts and myself. This is a fun little panel, kind of free-for-all. We're having a good time. And we talk about whether art can be objectively good, whether a person needs to be intimately acquainted with pain and suffering to make good art. I ask everybody who they would like to be compared to, what other artists, what other artists work in particular they would like their work to be compared to. We talk about how Randall finally came around to appreciating the Grateful Dead. Very exciting. And we give our best investments in the art career in terms of time, money spent on tools or supplies, things like that. We talk about technology and the importance and aliveness of being in the same room with people. So this is a very interesting celebratory episode. I'm glad you're here for it. I'm recording this intro a little early, so no subscribers so far on the week before this episode comes out. But if you would like to subscribe, here's my Patreon pitch. Go over there, check it out. Three tiers available, Four dollars, starting at $4. Go over, check it out. If you want to support the podcast financially, I'd really appreciate it. And shouts to all the current patrons. There are a few other people I'd like to acknowledge here at this point. First is Andrew Size. Andrew has been editing and shooting video for me for about the last six months. So big shouts to Andrew. He's new out here in the Colorado art scene. He also makes really cool paintings. So go check him out at I am underscore size on Instagram. And Mark Santos and Eliza Schultz for literally motivating me last year to keep this project running. I don't know where I would be without those two. Mark was shooting some beautiful video for me last year. Eliza was hooking it up with the emotional and organizational support. They're both really great at what they do. Check out Mark at Mark Styles Productions on Instagram. Eliza at underscore spin kit. So shouts to you both. And of course, my main man, CIA operative John Speaker. <laughs> He's not really, by the way. You're going to hear a lot about that this episode. He's not really in the CIA. But just, you know, laugh along with us for just starting this project with me and donating literally all the equipment after he was done to see it go. And guess what? Guess who followed through? That's right. That's right. I followed through. And you know what? I'm fucking proud of myself. And maybe you should be too. (laughs) All right. And here you guys go. Episode 100. Big milestone for me. I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to do it. This time last year, I was kind of just chilling. Not really making any new episodes or anything. So... Thank you guys for sticking with me. Thank you for listening. And here we go. Woo! Woo! Hundredth episode. Wow. Wow. What's up? Congrats. RTAF forever. Tell me how good I am, guys. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. She Way to go, you. Andrew. Way All to right. stick to something. All right, yeah. Okay, that's. I'm gonna cross that off the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
What's up, guys? <laughs> Thanks for coming here. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. Yeah. Thanks for being here is the John's catchphrase. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's thank you jo- for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Just like old times. So this is going to be a little chaotic and fun. And uh, yeah, six people on a podcast. Has anyone ever even done that before? What a star-studded cast. Wow. Yeah, we should yeah. do intros. <laughs> since let's do intros. Let's do intros. We'll start with the birthday lady. Birthday girl. Oh. Yeah. Mike, get, get in front of the mic there. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Crystallize. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful I can be here with yeah. you guys. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even know you were going to be here. I'm stoked. I know, I've missed you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so so you're out here um, making murals, or just one? Just one mural? Just one mural. Okay. Larger than life. Where? <laughs> <laughs> it's at the Life Flower Dispensary um, in Glendale, which is just like south mm-hmm. uh, southwest Denver. Southeast yeah. Denver, excuse me. Nice. Yeah. A sweet little spot down there, and um, it's a nice, beautiful little portal that I opened up this last couple weeks. So. <laughs> sweet. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, okay, yeah, I don't need any introductions. Hi, Emily. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Good. How are you? (laughs) (laughs) Emily, what do you do? I'm a painter. Oh. Oh. Emily (laughs) Cal, everyone. Emily Cal. Like mystical portraits. Naked ladies. Emily Cal. Yep. I forget that that people can't hear me, so I got to bend down to this mic. I don't know if we should share mics. Up to you. This is so sloppy. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone's turned this off. Start over. Let's just start over now. Start start over. And then we've got... uh, got the former co-host john speaker hi hey current cia member yep i uh, left the podcast to become a uh, member of the cia and i'm gonna take down this whole scene <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's oh, most Johnny. people don't know this but the the whole reason john is like a visionary artist it, it's all a front well don't blow my cover he's, bro he's here i'm talking i'm not talking to you <laughs> randall yeah you knew that, right? It's an MK Ultra fa- extension. It's yeah. like a Manchurian. It's pretty well known in the in the live painter circuit that John is involved mm-hmm. in. CIA, but <laughs> he's a it's, he's a fake. But Some, now all the yeah. fans know too. Somebody yeah. out there is gonna believe this. Boo, boo. Yeah. And they should. Well, they should. Yeah. yeah. They should use- <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be such a sketchball. <laughs> so if John ever asks you for um, specific drugs, drugs. Yeah. I don't know what it you guys are talking specific about. Specific amounts. I'm yeah, yeah. very cool. specific. Guys, I'm cool. I'm hip. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking. He's just looking for a place to party. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 totally. And if totally. you have any drugs, yeah. to he party would love with, to know. He would, yeah, like, yeah. You know, like he's you know just as soon do. He just uh, wants to know about them. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's looking for LSD, marijuana. Uh, he's <laughs> does, looking for a good time. Does yeah. anybody know where I could find a large amount of cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> Are you wearing a wire right now? <laughs> cancel uh, you. A what? Yeah, you're canceled, dude. Yeah. I have a. Oh, if okay. you're in the CIA, you're canceled, bro. Well, it was, we all knew it was coming. So, <laughs> all right. Anyway, Randall anyway. Roberts. Uh, Hello, the RTAF. imminent Randall Roberts. Hello, Twitterverse. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, YouTube. Twitter world. Uh, uh, hey guys. <laughs> hey guys. It's really nice to be back on the podcast, Andrew I, and 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 John to some extent. It's so great to have us all here. Yeah, and this happy is happy birthday, Crystal. And, uh, yeah, thank you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And last but certainly not least, the lovely Morgan Mandala. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. All right. That'll be enough. <laughs> Thanks. Morgan, give, oh, us, six, Morgan, give us 16 bars. Spit it. Go. <laughs> I, don't think you could, I don't think people could take the velvetness of the yeah. bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would, it would just melt. Everybody would just come yeah, in the pants I'm and then sorry. they'd turn out the just, podcast. Yeah. So Your good. voice, Morgan, I'd is probably. like a ASMR machine. <laughs> 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 it is. Say, say, welcome to Sesame Should Street. Really go for it? Yeah. Welcome to Sesame Street. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, that was Crack a little there. sultry. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, a little too sultry for Sesame Street. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sesame Street. Why did you think of that out of all things? Because <laughs> I don't know. Let's <laughs> just go to UK. Here, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, that would be Welcome to like... Artsy AF. Welcome. Welcome to Artsy AF. 
There we go. Cool. Yeah, Clip it. A, a, under pressure. I'm not. Time stamp. I need to. I need to get better at that. All right. Just all breathe, take it? a deep Should breath at the same time. Ooh. Yeah. All right. One, two, three. Welcome, Welcome to, to RTAF. That was spectacular. Ooh, that's there your we new go. tagline for the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That comes on in the beginning. Yes. Right? That was really. Good. All right. That's yeah, content that right there. Hundredth really episode. You can cut out episode. everything I said so far. So, <laughs> besides so, that, me too. This, that the podcast is actually just going to be that. Perfect. What we just did. Congratulations yeah. on the hundredth episode, by the way. Andrew. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that I stuck with it. Wait, yeah. It, yeah. What does it feel like? Because I quit fucking twenty episodes in. <laughs> you quit forty five episodes in. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we'll take oh, no, the, yeah. not that you care or anything. What does it feel like at the at the hundredth? What's I it mean, been like? It feels fun because you guys are here, but I mean, uh, I I see a path clearly now. Whereas, like last this time last year, I wasn't even recording anything. Mm. I was like, I'm gonna take a break and see how I feel. And then after about a month or so, I was like. I think I can keep doing this. Oh, uh, yeah. And yeah. I reached out to people on Zoom. Zoom has been the, like, I mean, that's awesome. You mm -hmm. know? I don't have to travel. I don't have to corral artists to come up here, you know? Oh, yeah. That kind of, I mean, like, you guys are some of my best friends. So, like, I mean, you are my best friends. So it was a little <laughs> that's easier. That's right, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Randall was, Randall rose out of his chair there for people just listening <laughs> wait rank us in order of friendship right now. <laughs> no, crystal's one <laughs> Aww. and everybody else is two <laughs> no but um it's so cool i was deep diving on all the episodes i missed recently and uh, just watched them back to back and uh yeah what you're doing is really cool and it may not i know with the daily grind of it the week or weekly grind as it were mm -hmm. like there's a lot of good material, especially for young painters out there to dive into. Like, I don't know, the Gabe one was blowing my mind last night. It just, uh, it's so cool to see all the, the literally the, all the colors of the rainbow through all these different people, you know, of different yeah. levels of professionalism and, and, and popularity. And, and, but there's this like thread that is artsy AF that it's hard to put your finger on. You can't really say, go on. <laughs> it's hard it, well it's hard to describe but you see artist after artist after artist all of them with all these different you know viewpoints it's i don't know it's it looks like a a, a beautiful carousel or something uh that you put together here and yeah i'm way into art and if you Are make you? art yeah if you <laughs> make art you're all we're already on the way to being friends if not we're already friends you know yeah, uh, yeah. i think maybe you're trying to say it's like a really uh comprehensive look at how different types of art are made and different people make art based on who they are oh yeah yeah, yeah. i mean take like a little nugget from each person like if you're an aspiring artist and everybody everybody knows something you don't it's like every episode somebody says like one thing and you're like oh yeah that's I'm what's up and that. it's like a yeah. master class in professional arts like you're getting this you have to go through you know a hundred hours of stuff, but yeah, yeah. it's not unpleasant. Everybody's got to vacuum the house and you or know, fucking a, paint throw a podcast paint. on or yeah. paint. Yeah, yeah. Or, or paint, right? Yeah. <laughs> or you could draw too, I guess. Draw. Yeah. Draw. <laughs> That's where you use your L's? <laughs> <laughs> he saves them up. He saves them for the draw. <laughs> draw. Oh, oh. can draw. He's no, this woof. Instead of wolf, that's why uh, we're making fun of it. Sorry. That's, how you, that's how you know. It's adorable. Is that what it is? Central Pennsylvania. No, it's a it's a Langley, Virginia <laughs> accent. I think it's called a speech impediment. <laughs> I'm an artist of the English language, guys. You are. Well, You're so anyway, so, yeah. so about that, like, um, you know how sometimes you start doing things and you don't know what you're doing. When we started this podcast, I was just like, "That'll be fun." Yeah. And now I'm. Regretting seeing it. the whole like picture of like it, it, you know i thought it would be fun and then you left and <laughs> 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 um no but i'm seeing this kind of like full picture it's it is actually like painting a picture of all these different artists not only in our scene and community mm -hmm. which i think is actually super special and needs more light shown on it for sure in a way um but also like just the larger contour of visual art 
that's happening right now mm-hmm. in the country and even you know hopefully the world yeah and expand that context a little bit too right it's mm-hmm. like because it can get kind of incestuous if it's only like we're all like fucking festival artists dude, visionary else, artists yeah trippy dude or like, you know manhattan in the 80s artists were all uh, incestuous too yeah yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah 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 there's nothing wrong with it but also, like, yeah, getting yeah, some Yeah, nothing wrong with incest. <laughs> Quote, unquote, by John Speak. Ooh, we're, we're going there. Here we go. I was thinking. Will you guys thing. quote that? <laughs> you should make one of your little graphics. Nothing wrong with incest. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So what else do you have on your list, Andrew? <laughs> All right. So we've covered... <laughs> incest. <laughs> Abortion was next, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's uh, there's one question that I just have thought about recently that I don't think I've actually asked anybody on the podcast yet, and that is, and we'll go we'll go around the circle. Oh, cool. And um, what is the best investment that you've made? Uh, in regards to being an artist, it can be time, it can be a uh, physical object, money mm. kind of thing. Mm. It can be a, a mental investment, maybe, uh, s- you know, self empowering, self care kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's that's just one thing that I think I think that really puts things into perspective and helps people think about this art thing that they're doing in a broader and maybe even deeper context. So um, who wants to start? I'll go. Go. So investment in the art journey would be, well, the biggest one would be like the investment of time was that as soon as I like realized I was an artist, it's like, I was pretty socially anxious anyway, but I just kind of like sort of dropped out of society in a way and just Mm -hmm. invested as much time as humanly possible into learning how to make art. And I continually do that, you know, like every day It's like every day is investing time into making art in any way, whether it's doodling, painting, it doesn't matter. So just putting as much time as I can possibly muster into playing the, you know, the, the live, I don't know, just playing the part of an artist, like actually Mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah. And then, and then, like monetarily, it would be uh, investing in anything I need to do the art thing, whether it's making the art or running the art business or anything. It's like my laptop's shitty. I'm just gonna buy a really good new laptop. It doesn't matter what it costs because if I invest in this process, it's gonna come back to me like tenfold. Or like if I like this color of paint or this brush, don't even question it. Just buy that shit. Doesn't matter. Invest in what the fuck is. It. Like at the well, pen- if, if you're broke, that puts your feet to the fire. Yeah. Too, I want to mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like put your, caveat like there. putting your money where your mouth is, right? Is like, are you, like, I decided, you know, I'm gonna become a professional artist. So like, whatever it takes, time wise, monetarily, I'm gonna pump it into this. And it's like, it seems that, at least in my case, is everything you put in comes back to you tenfold, a hundredfold. You know. So it's like, it's like, what is, like, what was, what's the hierarchy, and then. What do you invest in? So Mm -hmm. I would say that would be my greatest investments. Nice. Nice. (laughs) So, yeah, just kind of investing in the fact that you've committed to this, this path, Mm -hmm. this career as an artist. Yeah. And if there's like a tube of paint that you really want and it's like, seems too expensive, but it's the color you need and you want a lot of it, buy that shit. Don't question it, man. It doesn't deserve a question. Save up all that, you know money you made from mowing people's yards over the summer mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah get series you that, nine yeah series nine golden yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't buy four series nine. if you're if you're a poor artist i want to i want to say like buy mm-hmm. buy one but uh definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, yeah i know what you're saying wherever you are is you know it's in the context of wherever you are yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go that for makes it. a lot of sense that's fucking like yeah, that's what I did. Once Randall start, Mike. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> once you start uh, calling yourself an artist, I think that's the biggest investment. Yeah. Uh, I am an artist now. And anyone can do that, but if you have a decent f- community and they hold your feet to the fire, and hey, what's going on with your paintings? You know, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you man. said you're an artist, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't know if, if I could take my turn now. I'll say yeah. uh, 
it's weird because there's so many different things that come to mind. Uh, but I, I guess speaking into the ether to the young artist who may have four paintings and I don't know, me 20 years ago. Yeah. If I was to speak to that guy, I think the biggest thing that he did was to say, I'm going to make art every day for three hours if I can. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I so and then sort of sort of make art every day. You know, we have that that clip from the early Fuck like yeah. make art can be like, well, I'm gonna like put a little parsley on this omelet for my partner and surprise her in bed. That's you know, like <laughs> no, no, no. But I wouldn't. You wouldn't do the parsley you if you weren't in thinking in terms yeah. of like I'm gonna make art every day. Yeah, that's the artist. So, yeah, true, so, true. And that can be paying for somebody behind you at a toll booth or you know whatever. Like I'm, I'm that had made a big mm -hmm. difference for me. I, I um. I was addicted to coffee and cigarettes, and I'm, I somehow got the notion in my head, I'm like, <laughs> if I can get addicted to art, that would be great. So what I did was I set out all my stuff, mm -hmm. and I got up in the morning, and then I uh, coffee, cigarettes, paintbrushes, and sketchbook. Fuck yeah, and I've, for 15, 17 <laughs> years now, I've like more or less every day of the week hit my sketchbook at least. <laughs> Uh, every morning with coffee and I interlaced those addictions till so now when I smell coffee I think yeah I should probably make some art yeah it's and, like uh, the holy trinity of art you caffeine have loved, nicotine yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah uh yeah that was a big one for me I think that's the best investment I made was to just commit to that practice mm -hmm. oh, yeah. art every day nice. oh yeah, yeah I'll, go for uh, it I'll, I'll elaborate on what you both have just said and what was what was coming to me really was just the the investment was the commitment the the full commitment to the path of being an artist mm -hmm. and every sacrifice every like uncertain thing in my life that would come up along with that just staying true to knowing this is the path that I'm choosing um, I'm following my soul's calling and it may not be easy, but I know that I'm I'm committed to it because this is what I'm here to do. Totally. Yeah. 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 Everything that happens in your life is falling in the context of me becoming a great artist, right? It's everything is like playing into that story or something. Totally. And and I don't even know it for myself. It's like, I think being a great artist, and I'm not. Um, no caveats. Criticizing just, what you're saying, just yeah. that. Um, it's about the important like. For me, it was also about the importance of art, the role that it plays, that it, it's this incredibly important piece of what's happening and like the creative process is at the heart of life itself. Mm -hmm. mm. And the yeah, more yeah. that we can be creative as a as a species and like work together collaboratively and and have creative solutions to the world, like that was a huge part of why I was interested in being an artist was because I feel like that's not only what I feel most naturally like moving through me, but it's also this piece of what I think in the world is like important that we don't forget or like lose sight of how important it is. Mm -hmm. Totally. You want to say something? Sure. <laughs> um, Are you guys dating? <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, I think um, so many, so many investments over the years, but what really comes to mind is investing in learning from artists I love, like um, doing workshops with people whose work I really respect and picking up skills from them. And then also just like a practical little thing is like I've been paying a friend to do my social media and I feel more creative when mm. I'm not on there as much. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. So Yeah. So you're kind of like <laughs> divesting from scrolling on social media. Yeah. Nice. Mm hmm. Yeah, those are two great ones. That's a um, double-edged sword because we want you to keep looking at our stuff <laughs> on social media. <laughs> but, but I also think you should turn your fucking phone off right now and go yeah. outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and then come back to all this is for you.com. <laughs> uh, <Art by> <laughs> <Roberts. laughs> Get some headphones. Yeah. Keep listening to the podcast. Go for a walk. Yeah, yeah I, think, yeah. <laughs> I think you're all right in, in that you investment of time is obvious 
and mm-hmm. that looks a little bit different for everyone. I think, uh, you know, it might that investment might be investing in a job that you're like, like, OK, until your art business while you invest time learning the business side of things. That's a really good point. Mm-hmm. You might have to invest some other time having a job that you might not love while you build up your art business. So you're not, you know, falling on your face when you try to switch over. Um that's one thing. I think the investment in the relationships that you have with the people you meet on the road as an artist or people who invite you to gallery shows or um, because you end up seeing a lot of those people again and again Mm -hmm. and it does take an investment of time but it's also a community and that's important to Mm -hmm. uphold and um, yeah, you guys have done a really good job doing that. I mean it's so apparent like your house has this cycling guest list of superstars that come through because of that you know that you have connected with so many people we've spent the last eight years going around the world meeting the best people we can find uh so yeah it's not like an airbnb but we we have a lot of friends because we we went on tour for a long time and people have let us stay with them you know (laughs) (laughs) Uh, um but No, oh, yeah. that, that's a great point. I like what you said about investing in, in, in a day job for, for a while. Mm-hmm. It can be a groovy one. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe you just work the desk at a yoga studio. Something that overlaps with your the mission of art, you know, your own personal mission of art. Totally. It's like, yeah, yeah and you're, you're learning yeah. how to, yeah. Work like, at Dick Blick and steal fucking paint. You, you have know, to be creative day. in <laughs> your whole life, <laughs> yeah. you know, to yeah. learn how to make it work. And sometimes it yeah. takes a little bit of time. And just give yourself mm-hmm. the time. It's not like mm-hmm. you can just you know be like i've been painting for 10 years why am i not making it and it's like it can take a whole lifetime and you know yeah. still some people who regard as the most famous artists weren't successful in their lives so mm-hmm. it's like you have to love it like i think i've been addicted to art since i was a kid it mm-hmm. was just figuring out how to make a living mm-hmm. yeah. really <laughs> it was the hard part another thing i want to say to that 20 year old me is um don't be afraid to uh to leave home if like you hang out with a bunch of losers and your town sucks <laughs> yes yeah, and up. you've always wanted to go to iceland or or california or or whatever uh you should <laughs> go meet your family the, go meet some cool people like uh mm-hmm. that was another thing that i that i did uh and as far as like like we do have a lot of really brilliant sweet friends you know people right. like emily are the reason we like live is, is that we've curated this and john you were talking about this a couple of weeks ago too just about like maybe you're an artist to become to meet your your like your family, your family. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. and it becomes le- even less about making art and more about this like community of like people who troubled as we may be for you know x y and z yeah, uh, they're the best people in the world. I I always say if I find some cooler people to hang out with, I'm I'm leaving you guys to go hang out with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're art, not worried. <laughs> yeah. Through art, we, I, we've found like the best people in the world, all over the world, mm-hmm. and uh, are the people that we resonate most with. And I think art can, if you're into art and other people are too, then it's something, some sort of common ground for you guys uh, to like. Yeah, but know. don't be afraid yeah. to, afraid to leave home. T- travel. Uh, is an antidote to a lot of things that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's like getting out of that comfort zone. I packed you know? my car and moved to Colorado because I was I met a handful of people after college that I was like, these are my, this is my tribe, this is my family out here, and I felt a creative energy here, and I packed up a little car and didn't know where I was moving, but I was like, I need to be in Colorado. Fuck yeah! yeah. Quit my job. For the same yeah, thing. Was yeah. Like speaking I did to that you, too. and I re- literally yeah. met. All of the friends that, to this day, have been a creative community that's been going strong for over a decade, and I think about that all so the time. If I hadn't made that choice, if I just stayed comfortable, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you haven't met have, all of the people that are going to love you yet. That's a, yeah, I love it. Quote, quote yeah. that too, <laughs> <laughs> not just the other thing. <laughs> well, why do do you guys think that artists uh, or creative people in general are uh, like we seem like a little sensitive? <laughs> I'm right? sensitive for sure. Yeah, I know that. yeah. I'm narcissistic definitely narcissistic and self-obsessed. HSP. And, yeah. what, what was that? HSP. 
What's that? I'm a highly sensitive person. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole Why do you think that is? <laughs> do you think those things go like hand in hand or like do you have to be sensitive to create good art or can you It would make sense that sensitive people like I don't think you would have to be, but it would make sense that a sensitive person would make art because everything is kind of the feelings of life are very amplified for a sensitive person, which translates to creative expression pretty easily. I don't know if it's like a I don't know if you have to be super sensitive, you know. It's like, I don't, do you think like MC Escher was sensitive? Do. I don't really get that vibe from him. I think Maybe. people do it for different reasons. Or like yeah. some people are the sensitive artists and some people are like, oh, I just fucking crush. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Sensitive in the sense of like, of like being aware of uh, minute details or your surroundings. Yeah. Or, mm-hmm. or sensitive you know? to sensitive criticism well. and, and things like that. You know, it's, it's a weird thing. Like, um, this is weird. But I'm gonna talk like this first. Eating a sandwich. He he like an HR guy group painting. Um, <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> but it's it's weird because we put ourselves out there for. It's almost like, oh, I'm you know th- I, I'm self conscious and I need people to like me, so I'm going to use this creative thing that I have, this talent that I have to kind of. Please don't take a picture of this. <laughs> <laughs> Please, oh no pictures. Oh, my God. He's <laughs> running the show, man. <laughs> <laughs> Please. No. Um, but we put ourselves out there, right? And and it's all, we're almost asking for criticism. Mm. It's this weird kind of oh. paradox where, like, I know that, like, um, I, I'm not, like, super devastated when people attack my art, but... Um, I am. I am. It but it depends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it depends. Well, like, I guess. If it's not for you, then why are you looking? Like, just move on to someone else's art if you don't like it. Yeah. Is kind of how I feel. Cause like, you're, there's yeah. so many different kinds of art. It's not gonna be everyone's taste. I know that. I feel like we're all probably our own worst critics. Mm-hmm. But sure. also, sensitive can mean like a person who cries a lot. But yeah. it can also just mean like someone who picks up more information with their nervous system in yeah. a given situation yeah, yeah it might just yeah. be like i feel like that's it could definitely goes along with being an, an empath mm-hmm. and mm. i don't know that the two are fully overlapped um but there's definitely a crossover there and i find and this is just my own personal experience but i'm sure other people can relate to that is when you're highly sensitive and you feel everything on, on like an amplified magnitude that can also create a tremendous amount of anxiety if you yes. don't know how to process all of the different feelings that oh, you're yeah. receiving and like information from your yeah. surroundings. Yeah. And so that's why I think art is a really help, helpful tool mm-hmm. because it's a way yeah. of moving Processing. through all of these different feelings that you're having as a highly sensitive person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like it's an outlet for processing those feelings and it's like a personal sensations, exactly. <clears throat> Yeah, personal form of processing instead of having to involve other people, which I think someone who's more sensitive sometimes might go They don't want to do that. Yeah. Right, exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. You're so sensitive. Because you don't want to affect other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with yeah, how yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's you're also, like, let me just, I'll just go in the corner and do the things yeah. right now. No, but properly motivated, that anxiety can turn into action. And, totally. And exactly. motivate you to finish some fucking oh, that's what it's all about right there it's right. also it's a like coping mechanism but it's not a numbing mechanism yes. Yes. so it's like yeah, yeah. yeah. it literally healthy. can help you process through stuff in a healthy way i think that Ooh. what um but <laughs> that's cia <laughs> code if i've ever heard of it <laughs> No, it it's a healthy form of processing. I feel like it psychologically can help you. It has helped me work through some shit in my life and mm-hmm. be totally. able to. I don't know. I I like it's it's like meditation mixed with whatever you want it to be. Plus, you know, you can also address your own personal traumas or whatever you need to address within it too. I think it can be a huge tool for that. So. But some people also approach art differently, which is why I don't think it's necessarily just for sensitive people, because I think Mm -hmm. you can approach it in a really um, 
just very straight up way that doesn't involve your emotions whatsoever. If you're mm -hmm. just doing photorealism or if you're doing mm -hmm. something that's very just almost mathematical with mm -hmm. art, I don't think, I think maybe sensitive people do that, but I don't, I don't know whether or not well, it's no, more. That can serve a really valuable purpose of giving someone without it uh, some self-confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, I've been freehanding these uh, logarithmic, uh, spiral uh, mandalas every morning for a couple months now and like I'm finally getting like pretty good at it where I don't need a ruler or anything you know what I mean and that there's a little it's just a little bit of like uh, confidence and you know I was a scrawny kid from the hood uh, with with a bunch of stronger mean people around me growing up you know and like as an adult it's like anywhere you can get a little bit of confidence flex son Fuck yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You get a little bit of confidence, like, and you know, like, so you can, so if you, if you, you, you said uh, hyper realist painters, like, th they may be very emotional, and they may yeah. need a little bit of, yeah. And if you can paint a, 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 you know, a, a station wagon in a driveway and make it look exactly like a photograph, and you go like, God damn it, I did it, and like, there's yeah. a little mm -hmm. bit of, uh, um, you know, goodness that comes out of that for yeah. you uh, on your own personal emotional journey yeah mm -hmm. yeah right you know? yeah you know and there might also be something to like maybe just every human being is sensitive because the people a lot of people that buy our art aren't making art but they're sensitive enough to resonate with the expression of a sensitive person so maybe everybody's sensitive we're all just playing different roles in society yeah and that like you know i'm always like wary of kind of being like Artists are sensitive, like you know true, what I mean. Because it's yeah. like, yeah. Because artists can be bad motherfuckers too. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Really sensitive people is, can be. Can yeah, be. I, they're everything. I yeah, think artists yeah. are everything. I, I yeah. think, yeah, I don't think that you have to be sensitive to be. That, an that's also what I've realized about this show is that I need to convince as many people on the planet that they are actually like some kind of artist or some kind of like creative totally. person mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what you do but when you when you take in all this shit and with all the shit we're being that's being thrown at us through our cell phones mm -hmm. you know you have to process that somehow yeah and like why not create something with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know well, if, if you're you a meme you're a fucking artist yeah, yeah. totally 100%. there's no if one type make, if yeah, you yeah. make lunch like again, yeah. like a plate of food. <laughs> like so, if cooking. you make Cheerios, no, been, no, 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 no. <laughs> but like, just, when Randy. you make yourself lunch, you can either like just you know stand it over the it sink and eat eggs out of a pan, mm -hmm. or you can like put it on a plate. Okay, so now you're putting it on a plate. Yeah. So then you put the eggs here. You put three grapes there. A sliced strawberry here. Then you're starting to like make a plate that like looks beautiful, totally. and you're eating that beauty. And like, you're an artist. Yeah, like, that's yeah. art. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that, that's like a thing that's like. You know, or, or 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 you're at a friend's house in the bathroom and you you wipe the water off the sink on your way out. You made it. You left it a little better than you found it. Wipe your pee up off. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> be a sweetie and yeah. wipe. The well, yeah, CD. it seems like you know, <laughs> like in a world full of suffering, any act that alleviates suffering is an act of creativity or art, right? That's yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And we're like <clears throat> the only species that can consciously create. Besides what we consider to be divine. So isn't right. that something? Why not indulge a little bit? Totally. Um, yeah. Do, do you think mm -hmm. you have to be like intimately acquainted with uh, suffering and pain to make really good art? Or do you think that you can just have a really, really easy life? I don't know how you can be a functional human being without being connected to pain and yeah. you know it's like well yeah like who is there is there anybody that's like no no pain just like <laughs> or, or s maybe just suffering it's a spectrum i think yeah. you yeah. know there are people that don't identify with a huge amount of suffering that are incredible artists and then there's like the stereotype of like the suffering artist which is a stereotype for a reason but yeah but isn't it all on the individual level too like right. some of the richest people i know are the most unhappy mm -hmm. some of yeah. the most uh uh you know people who go through a lot of pain and suffering are the most content people i know like i i don't know like what like it's all individual like th like even a pr extremely privileged person is going to have their mother pass away totally yeah. like yeah that's not gonna feel very good yeah like, like you know like what what i don't know 
I think like, s- everyone suffers great. Right, one of right, 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 right. In this, in no this, one has an easy life. No one's actually. getting out of this shit alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. So isn't hurts. that like fundamentally like we all have equal footing on suffering, and so that we all have equal footing on creation? If you want, like, I, I don't think it. Yeah. yeah, we're all experiencing human suffering through yeah. the context of our own life, and yeah, it's yeah. All you know, the there's context, so yeah, your lens individual. is like, yeah. Everyone has their own lens and their own spectrum, and that spectrum is different than the human spectrum. But I think the thing with artists and the association is more that I think the depressed or the sorrowful or melancholy state for some artists induces a mode of creativity that they can't reach when they're content. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. I, that's unfortunate for some people, but that's true for some people. Like they almost have to self induce suffering in order to get to the meat of their creativity. Mm-hmm. Well, I and think it's you you talked about being numb earlier, Emily. And like mm-hmm. I think that that what you're describing now is like cutting through the numbness and you're like yeah. what's yeah. the what's like joy is obviously feel something. yeah yeah you just need to feel something right <laughs> and it's rock bottom places are like really fertile places yeah, yeah. Like there's so many mm, possible yeah. directions you can place that energy towards mm-hmm. totally janice joplin uh, uh has a performance on the dick cavett show from mm. the 70s uh it's totally worth going and watching uh and like she was really ridiculed in high school and like She's one of the people I always go to is like, wow, her portal to the other side was fucking so like wide open in her face and yeah. her voice. And she hits this cracking crescendo in one of those songs where it's just open. It's wide open. The fucking sunroof is open. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, I think she's one of those people that like really uh benefited from being ridiculed in high school and then she got and mm-hmm. you know she sadly was an alcoholic and all those other things but but we She's got to alive, see right? yeah. the i don't know ask the guy the in the cia for, the suffering was the fuel for her art in in part yeah. it was an ingredient yeah. yeah for sure because you hear her pain yeah, even in a, in a joyous it. chorus but but i don't think she could have sang like that without without her or, or a hard time, you know? Right, yeah. right. I think it's more about, like, um, acknowledging your suffering and being in touch with it and not being numb and knowing that, like, you can use that lead and turn it into gold. And allowing yeah, like yourself... Saying, yeah. Like, use it as a, a motivator. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Not being scared of your suffering, diving headfirst into it. And your, your fears about being a human being at all is, like, don't not ever turning a blind eye to it instead diving headfirst into your pain or your fears or all of that. Like that's where freedom is on the other side of like confronting it, not blinding yourself or doling yourself to that spectrum of human experience, you know, right. embrace it, let it wash over you. It's mm. like, and I think there's like a sweet spot between bypassing your suffering and just sitting in it. And I think yeah, yeah. art can really help with that movement mm-hmm. and moving through it. Mm-hmm. It's the chia seeds of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like fiber. Yeah. <laughs> it's like art is the fiber. It's the <laughs> metamucil of suffering. <laughs> <laughs> suffering. Clip it. <laughs> um. So yeah, we all just saw. I wanted to talk about Dune. I know this is gonna be nerdy. Okay. Oh my god! I didn't okay. know this was a science fiction podcast. <laughs> All right, so we covered Dune. Shy right. Good. 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 Great. Good. Great film. Okay. No, but w- we should talk about how um, Randall, you just had a, a a come to Jesus moment with the Grateful Dead. Thank you. Yeah, oh, he's oh. dead head now. He's dead he made head. Made fun of me for years because I no, love well, the Grateful Dead. A lot of that was in good fun and just being was, yeah, jestful, most, like yeah. yeah. Good, good fun. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, now, I am now a dead head. Joke. I am now a deadhead. Uh, I identify as a deadhead. <laughs> DH or, or, or D head. Uh, <laughs> D head. Everybody call Randall D head. Everybody call it Randall D head. 
I can think of some other. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I was around it my whole life, uh, yeah. and clear, my interest in psychedelics uh, and how profoundly they affected my life uh, were a big deal. I, I for a, a long time worked with uh, Zane Kesey, selling blotter art, and like, even with all of these connections. Uh, I always saw the Grateful Dead as a sort of uh, satellite uh, thing in my little world. The first time I took acid, uh, we were saying earlier, my, my little brother gave me Nine Inch Nails' Downward Spiral album, and I, I listened to that on headphones. It's a uh, good album. Yeah, uh, but and that electronic uh, you know, chainsaw going around and around in your head uh, seemed more appropriately psychedelic than me to me <laughs> than a... A blues and a, 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 a banjo and a, and a classically trained jazz, you know, whatever the conglomerate the Grateful Dead is, it always just seemed like you still don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but but I've I've gone on a super deep dive of everything Grateful Dead, and I emerged on the other side with a lot of um, gratitude, like almost you know emotional He's gratitude almost crying for what these guys did for the you world, to the eyes of the world? <laughs> <laughs> hey i'm too sensitive for that <laughs> um yeah so i'm way uh look for a steely or a or a, or a jerry <laughs> portrait coming up um Fire. i really admire their uh dedication to improvisation and thank you their yeah just what they did the whole thing especially in the early days what they set out to do and how they never fucking faltered yeah. from their original mission even though things got so crazy it, you know we all know uh, how things ended up for for a lot of the, the guys involved with that movement but they always held the line they never went into this like they had the potential to just go full messiah and blow the whole thing you know they could they could start they could have started, a cult. They yeah, could have they started could have saying started. stuff during yeah, their yeah. shows hey you guys and they always were like nope fuck that all about the music yeah. and it's all about yeah they they rarely addressed the crowd one out of, of 50 shows they right. would even say just hello doing the goddamn thing. Yeah, they yeah. just let the whole container be what it wants to be mm-hmm. and as a, as an art piece that really hit me hard and the, the, how fiercely intelligent uh jerry and bear owsley and and phil lesh all are you know like you're listening to them speak is very comforting mm-hmm. they're the best hey do you guys know that the grateful dead is fucking I awesome <laughs> i feel like everybody listening to the podcast oh, is like, like yeah uh, cool. yeah. This is like a, the, the beginning of like well, our whole scene and what we do is like the doing yes thank you but it was really cute and i'm we're both very happy about that. I'm yeah. Glad I want to Welcome to the board. family. <laughs> Finally, uh, We're very proud of you, Randall. <laughs> it was like Grateful Dead was restricted to the car when Randall wasn't there. <laughs> Dude, have you guys ever make... have you guys ever listened to the Grateful Dead on weed? <laughs> Just do that right no. now. <laughs> do you know that the CIA is indirectly responsible for the Grateful Dead for oh, real? Yeah. <laughs> Are they? LSD. They were doing Let's experiments at Stanford University and Ken Kesey was oh, yeah, a yeah, student yeah, yeah, yeah. and he took yeah. the acid yeah. and then he said, Hey, what is this stuff? And then he went out and he took his book money and he made a whole bunch of acid. And then start throwing the acid uh, parties in, in San Francisco, where the Warlocks, which would then become the Grateful Dead, would play shows right. every day. Right. That's so and, cool. Like... But it was literally a Stanford slash CIA funded yeah, experiment yeah. that started it, which, they John, you should yeah. uh, be able to elaborate <laughs> on. Like, yeah. Well, I just think it's so beautiful, right? Like that uh, people that in their ego. Government e- structure. It, well, people in their ego <laughs> and that wa- control, like that, that energy got converted into beautiful influence of freedom of expression you know it's like mm. it, it flipped itself on the head like anytime the ego tries to control and influence power over people it will maybe for a faltering point in time but that will always get converted and transformed in creative energy if there's people willing to be there and play with it you know mm-hmm. and i think that's fucking badass yeah it's like mm-hmm. the reversal of gentrification in a way mm-hmm. like the government is trying to impose something on the people yeah. and then the people will take it and flip it into something much more expressive, much more uh, aligned with human value. Totally. You know, and uh, I think we're all, all in a way is I don't want to speak in any specific way, but there's all <clears throat> these things of churning of power happening mm-hmm. right now. And I think there's going to be a whole cultural wave of people taking or there's all this, 
there's a lot of people trying to have power over people at this point Mm -hmm. and there's going to be some sort of grand creative expression out of this time as well yeah you know it's like there was a cooling off from that hippie wave into this condensation where we are today and there's something that's gonna have to blow it out with creativity again here soon that'd be tight we'll see that the internet internet is a weird intersection of science and like okay so when they when they when they dropped the first nuclear bomb it was like fuck all y'all science is in charge in case you didn't know you know Mm -hmm. and science has produced the internet and now the internet comes back and grabs all the people again Mm-hmm. And so you're, you know, these holes left when, when, the, when the nukes went off, there's a religion hole, there's a community hole. It, it's like, you know, in case you didn't get the memo science is running everything now, you know, and before yeah. the nuclear bomb, it was up in the air mm-hmm. where we're, where we're headed uh, as a, as a global community, you know, maybe we'll go uh full religious or full agriculture. And then science was like, no, it's. It's science from now on, guys. You know, yeah, like we can destroy the earth. We can destroy the earth. And so, but then, like, yeah, this, uh, this, this creeping in of this of 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 the human factor back into science via the internet has yeah. created this kind of like weird new polymer that's like a mix of of of, of human and 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 we're all like working it out on the internet. Yeah. The internet's a crazy. I th- I think about the internet so much yeah. <laughs> it's such a weird thing to say but like it's it's a network it's of internet interconnected the, computers yeah it's the and it's the absolute <laughs> dominant um form of media and i don't think that it i don't know how we can get much better maybe besides Neuralink in this web 3.0 which is actually the metaverse not the gentrified facebook version of the metaverse how long do you think <laughs> it's going to be before the human race is uh, changed by computer uh, take, hybrid hybrid hybridization. I th- I think Wait, what? Tell me again. Uh, uh, yeah, when is the matrix happening? Like, or, or, um, or you know, how long before um, I think we're plugging our bodies into uh, electronics? And you and don't know, Randall. I, we already have <laughs> it. We already yeah. have yeah. it somewhere. This, no, this, but this like, is this is we like the Grateful there. Dead we, again. Well, She's like, like <laughs> still behind. No, 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 no. no I mean. What I'm saying is, is where <laughs> like the the, the current human race like, uh, will be unrecognizable, and now you're in AirPods. a new. It's I don't a know new. We'll make it. If we make it, it's gonna be like a million years. Well, here's a what million? I think. I think like look, 800, 300. Yeah, not a million. Like, yeah. like here's what I think. To look physically different. I think in Unless 50 we years we could be Italian. completely unrecognizable. 50? What? Or. Maybe not fifty, okay, but a hundred and fifty. Is everyone getting surgery or like? No, what yeah, I mean is that like, they can't, it can't change. like evolution takes time. All, yeah, all of our of so you know the old phrase atten- uh, energy flows where attention goes. Mm-hmm. We're all putting our attention already on Web 2.0, which is the internet as we know it, which has been conquered by entities like Facebook and Google and Amazon. Mm-hmm. But the Web 3.0 is the actual metaverse where you put on your vr headset ready player one shit yeah and so what i mean by that is that we'll all have little avatars with like fairy wings and you know raptor claws and you know and we'll be flying around this place and we'll either be living in you know stacked trailers like in ready player one Mm -hmm. or Maybe something a little more utopian for our bodies, Trailers at side least. By side. Yeah, tra- yeah. <clears throat> at uh, that point, I'm hoping that we figure out if our technology. I mean, I guess we are, we could get there quickly, but we'd still look like humans. Well, yeah, hopefully, we'd. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, like hopefully we put stuff. a little bit more investment into like getting off the planet before our population goes that nuts. I would love if the future turned out turned out like Star Trek, where it's just a utopian future. Gay people <laughs> in space, and and they just yeah, yes. you just have the the replicators for everyone, and then like oh, we we solved poverty and hunger. Let's travel yeah. space together forever. <laughs> but that's a really know. cheery version <laughs> yeah. of what I know, might of happen. That's some rose colored glasses. And that's probably not Grateful what's going to happen if you're not into Star Trek. Okay, <laughs> uh, next generation, et cetera, et cetera. Like, 
if no, no, but I like the idea of the utopian future because it isn't very likely, but um, just we, we spend so much time thinking about this dystopian, horrible future where we all die, which is actually kind of where we're heading, but I think if we put more energy into maybe what a utopian or what a better future would actually look like where we could sustain mm-hmm. ourselves as a human race mm-hmm. together and there'd have to be peace if we're going to all live that close on top of each other in fucking storage units then yeah we'd have to figure some other shit out but and I, I think um, also I, is like projecting into the future right there's personal responsibility that comes in here as well is that if you're spending your time you know being fired up and angry politically online and then like wanting to cancel people and this and that like you're you're perpetuating this dystopian thing that we're moving into right so it's every individual is choosing the path as well well yeah are you choosing a path of optimism how do you integrate with this online world and people around you if you're appreciating people encouraging and inspiring people then you're helping to build an optimistic future but if you are piling on in this kind of like you know like you're you're getting your pleasure out of taking down people cutting things down being angry and mad all the time you're sowing a dystopian future so like Mm -hmm. well and i think a lot of times those people have like a a good like they want to do something good by calling people out like they're trying to make things better in the world for what they Mm -hmm. see as better but they're not going about it in a way that people are being receptive to. And I think really it's Well, just it, I think it's a matter of uh, intensity yeah. uh, case by case, yeah. you know, like... And nothing's black Of and course, white. Harvey Weinstein should have of gotten course. taken down It's no like question that. to anybody, right? Of you course, know Bill saying. Cosby. Yeah. And then, course. then you get into more gray areas, and then you get into people being like... You said something that hurt my feelings as a joke, yeah. inadvertently. <laughs> Maybe and, internalize and like, that and mm. make, make something that's <laughs> a, yeah, a response yeah. to that thing that's not actually really hurting anyone. Well, and yeah, it's like it, it's also easy for us to say too, right? Uh, like we're not the person who is dealing with feelings like that. Mm-hmm. But like we were saying earlier about the sensitivity thing, the the crucible to transmute all that shit is creativity and art totally <laughs> creativity in life itself as well is like can you integrate creatively with your current circumstance even if the world looks bleak and your own situation is difficult can you integrate creatively with that state rather than perpetuating the suffering and compounding on it you know mm-hmm. that, that's all the individual responsibility as a and then collectively the more people the well, more like, people all yeah. sorry no, no 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 yeah. i was just gonna say it's i'm agreeing it's like what are you spreading like because we, none of us individually, even as a collective, really know what's going on in the world. Exactly. You just know what you read or what you see, and that's what someone made. That's their interpretation of it. Mm-hmm. We have no real true idea. You can look at Good News Network and think only good things are happening in the world, or it just it depends on, on how you take that information in and where from. And sometimes I think it's not the healthiest to even take it in, because we're not mm-hmm. meant to handle all of that. Yeah, we're meant to totally. handle our small community and it, the things we do from day to day. So, mm-hmm. And another thing that complicates all that is that with, again, I'll use this phrase, the gentrification of the internet, they've put us into these little silos and little cattle driving mm-hmm. rows. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, we see what you like. We're just going to play on those like initial thoughts and feelings you might have that aren't may not be in the beginning like that rah-rah or that actually pissed off. Mm-hmm. But then you get this like feedback loop yeah and Mm -hmm. and guess what i still fucking scroll through my phone every day yeah yeah and it's i and i wish i didn't but i don't know how to (laughs) stop it (laughs) yeah you know and even just keeping a slight awareness of whatever my maybe opinions are about this or that i might be slowly becoming radicalized in any direction and always being coming aware of that and questioning your thoughts and your maybe rage at whatever's happening is question what is fueling that and maybe temper it a little bit and, and internalize and process well it. you don't have to believe everything you think yeah and <laughs> nearly all thoughts are not unique totally. or almost all thoughts are not unique mm-hmm. it's really it's nearly impossible to have a unique thought mm-hmm. right it's all just this sort of lineage of you know 
philosophy. I've been noticing that how I like quote stuff I heard yesterday from people I admire. All the time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, mean, I'm basically giving you guys a Terrence McKenna rap right now. It's (laughs) called Inspiration. (laughs) (laughs) Clip it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and that's the motivation for putting good shit out in the world. It is. I was having a conversation with a dear friend last night who's quite radical, and she's involved in, uh, you know, uh, giving underprivileged inner city kids um uh a leg up and it's her whole life she's dedicated her life to doing that kind of work that's just very nice i wouldn't call that radical right well no but she's um you know politically a little she's frustrated at the system uh, the, 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 the the white patriarchy that you know yeah is currently more or less running shit globally but um, I also, you know, I, I, I just said, you know, well, my answer to that, as uh, diluted and as subtle as it is, was to become an artist. I looked at the whole world, and if it's a tree, right, and there's all these leaves, you can look at the racist leaf and get really mad about it. But there, there are a lot of other leaves. <laughs> totally. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, I, I thought, you know, 20 years ago, how could I do the least harm with my skill set? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I do believe in the power to inspire other people simply through your example as a it's a slow cooking spice it's not a strong spice in the soup it's a it's a it's an underneath one like like thyme or or a little bit of salt you know it's like like just I, I'm gonna lead by example Oh, is there ginger and, in this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, is it? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I don't I don't think we should go out in the street and cut rich people's heads off you know totally uh, uh, that, sloppy response it's, yeah it's, yeah it's almost not even their fault it, they're Part reacting the to the context of where they are and who they are and when they are you exactly know? i yeah. think um when you have that emotional reaction to someone that's like racist or something really off-putting it's it's really an invitation to like look at yourself and practice self-awareness and see like where am I doing small things that Mm -hmm. echo that pattern that really throws me off and I think that's how we grow instead of focusing on like the other other people that we're mad at like how am I doing that in a small way Mm -hmm. and how can I fix it yeah a lot of people have been tortured to death throughout human history for the right reasons (laughs) <laughs> right, yeah. And I think we have to be very careful about that. No, no, I mean no, that, I know, I know. that you know <laughs> they had the right outlook. The the, the the torturers yeah. were righteous in their intent and they of course it meant it you know, of course torture it made sense. Of course torture is wrong. Of course torture is wrong. That's a quote. Yeah. No, just kidding. <laughs> we need to make t shirts. Of course torture was wrong. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, there's, there's also the view of like, um, what a hundred years ago, people would go to public executions. Yeah. Not behind. That's going on now. Well, I know that's going on now, but they're, but, (laughs) but they would haul them out to the city square, the city, the central, uh, but they're at jail. Yeah, say what you it. want about television. Like, it, it solves a lot of problems. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, we don't go yeah, to yeah. see pit bulls tear apart a bear on Friday afternoon either anymore. Like, <laughs> we did for a thousand years. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> now you just got to be following, look at this Russian on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you find people fighting bears with their dogs all day. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, we've come a long way is what I'm trying to say. Like torture yeah. used to be like entertainment, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just like an example of how there are a lot of fucked up things in our society right now, but mm-hmm. we're doing way better than we were as humanity a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago. It's like a, it, it, we are changing with the internet and our te- technology way faster than we can change culturally. And yeah. we're doing okay, but it's displayed since social media. Now everyone has a voice. You're getting too many angles, Mm -hmm. too many sides of the stories at once. You can't see anything clearly. It's just like, Mm -hmm. but it's also showing us how important it is to come back and like rediscover your own compass and, and where that's leading you, not just, you know, attacking or bouncing off of what everyone else is thinking. Right. Well, I think culture actually lives downstream from technology. Mm -hmm. Like, the technology is the context in which people 
cling to whatever or create whatever they do. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually think that like the internet is this wave that's like washing away all these, you know, cultish religiosity and like it's just also, wrong ways of thinking, it's but it's creating, creating new creating cults. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's creating. Well, some crazy this is what happens. This time. is what's happening. Everybody's like looking for a like life raft to cling on to, mm-hmm. and there's this shitty decaying log in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, and you're like, well, I guess this is good, mm. and you just <laughs> you just cling to it yeah. for dear life. And you know, I think at the end of the day, any ideology is is you're actually going to drown in that. Yeah. yeah, and I think we all have to be careful in a certain way. Is like it's not in defense of religion, but I think, you know, religion has is kind of it's dying away qu- quickly, and we all have a religious shaped hole, and we're trying to fill it with something. Everybody's getting fucking religious about politics and fucking whatever is the new flavor of the week. It's like we're all we have this religious impulse, and you have to temper that, be aware of it, because it, it's like. Yeah, I'd like to offer uh, art as the religious <laughs> impulse. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, in line with uh, dear old Uncle Al. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I think as Americans too, specifically, since we kind of, you know, lack a culture besides what we've created since we started, which is we're a very young country. And so our culture, a lot of it has to do with our entertainment and our media and technology. That's what it is. That's what it is. And so yeah. we associate ourselves and our value and all these things like that's all we got. And as it changes, we're it's it's and gets blown out and kind of ruined. It's really affecting that part of us, too, because we don't have as Americans. We're a mix of all these different cultures and some people can choose one you know, and, and identify with it and then they have a new identity. But really we're all just kind of scrambling for our identity as Americans and, and what we chaos. are and who we are. It is chaos. Like mm-hmm. we don't have anything to hold on to. That life raft of the internet we're scraping for because that's all we got, you know, <laughs> yeah. at this point. I like, feel like we got some buildings <laughs> that we gotta tear some, you know, old white men then we got to tear those guys down because they're racist asshole fucks like we had statues of those people like they like we've got a yeah, lot yeah. of work to do as far as our culture goes you know like well, yeah mm-hmm. and and yeah i think the internet is just coming in and wrecking all that shit I so been, what i think mm-hmm. is like it's both a tool it's like a tool like anything uh, like a tool can be used to be something that's useful and it can be used to be something that's destructive And so we are holding a very powerful choice in our hands with this tool on which direction that we want this to go. And it hangs in each and every person's hands as this like personal choice, um, which I think it's not a, I don't necessarily think it's a choice around whether or not to use the internet technology and stuff like that. It's like how we use it and also creating balance in our lives. Like collectively, we have the power to choose the kind of future that we want to create. And do we want to be in a future that we're all wearing VR headsets and like hanging out in some weird subliminal space? Or do we want to create real communities of people that we love and trust and ac- can actually reach, like, reach out and touch? And I say this you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah well, in COVID times, but no, <laughs> like, yeah. no, yeah, but you want to not just feet, touch, please. like give a big fucking <laughs> hug yeah, and yeah. like yeah. actually be able to feel the presence of real love and trust and supportive community. And if we get too absorbed into the tech space, we might build connections that feel like they have some substance to them. But I don't know that those connections are always as real as the real true like heart to heart on the ground person to person connections that we can also cultivate in our lives. And so it's not one or the other. It just comes down to both choice. And like, I think I just think of the word balance. Like we have to create a balance in our lives with how we use technology Mm -hmm. and like also integrate, uh, like our, and, and maintain our connection with nature. Mm-hmm. I think that's super that's important. like the most important Essential. part, you yeah, know. It really is. I think there's a real like mainstream movement to towards like humanness mm-hmm. and the old ways and stuff. So like I have faith mm-hmm. that maybe right. some of that will come through in our future. And I think mm-hmm. about 50 years from now, and everyone's not in 
like yeah it's probably going to be test. integrating yeah, some people will be some people will but be. it'll be a mixture be beautiful communities of people and cities and who knows that are you know somebody's got to grow the food finding right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you know when it could be maybe we change to where a little bit more where everyone grows a little bit of their food and we still have you know grocery stores and things like that but maybe everyone has a rooftop garden or they have a community garden yeah or or something exactly. um that's just can be a little bit more sustainable for as our population grows yeah crystal what you just said about like being with someone in like physical real life i think is really really important like there's mm -hmm. something that happens when uh people are in the same room in the same like you know for lack of a better term like energetic field Energy yeah. Sphere. <laughs> well, yeah yeah like when she was talking about that the, i was thinking like the we all get a lot of praise on the internet we have tons of connections with people right i but don't but like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, just kidding. speak for you yourselves, you. person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm it was a joke. But like, regardless, right? Like, you know, you experience that attention online or praise or whatever. But like, uh, an afternoon spent with your friend that really isn't particularly that great or that bad is so much more fulfilling than. 12,000 likes on Instagram or yeah, some shit like that. Absolutely. Or that spontaneous, like, synchronistic meeting with someone that, like, you're at somewhere and you go outside at a crossroads and this thing happens and you're like, oh, my God, and this is my life and this, and this is my life and oh, oh my mm -hmm. God. Yeah. And you have these, like, <laughs> whoa, like, that can happen online, but not really the same way as it's, you feel yeah. vibrationally when you meet someone in person that just has this mag... mag like uh, mm -hmm. um, magnetism. magnitude magnetism. to magnetism to them that you just know that your your souls connected, connected and for a reason and there's all I don't kinds know, it's so much more tangible when it happens in person at least for me and like I value those kinds of experiences so deeply they're the kind of experiences that I live for with people and you can't substitute yeah. that with online connections as much as we can value and love the people that we are connected with online. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think also, I don't know, I might be, all of us are, you know, around the same age. Except for grandpa. <laughs> Except for me, I'm about to be but 81. Two years young. <laughs> <laughs> I think growing up with no phone, like, you know, the phone's attached to the wall and, and just then as we get older, having dial internet, up internet. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel like to us. I think since we were raised without that, we don't feel like it's an authentic connection or natural mm -hmm. and it feels forced and it feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's hard for me personally. Yeah. I think you don't interact with whole people online. Um, you interact with a certain part of a person mm -hmm. that has been chosen to represent them. But mm -hmm. I think we all really need to be seen in like the wholeness of who we are and at least a couple relationships. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's hard online because there's the natural, like, defense or there's the natural filter that you're putting up of yourself. Like We're all self-censoring as well. No one's, like, <laughs> posts, like, Here's my I'm, zit. St <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck in traffic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Check out I'm the in, zit. <laughs> check out this gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I noticed, too, that you're, you're a different person from moment to moment. Yeah. And when you put that in writing during that moment, you what whoever this is you were a problem. that moment. Yeah, this is and, a problem. And when do you like draw the circle around the person and exactly. say this is who they are? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, is it over the course of 10 or 20 or or 5 or or 60 years? In my case 80 or 90 <laughs> years. But, <Yeah. laughs> but uh, you know there uh, when I when you like look at yourself and how you act through moment to moment some they're in the same day. You're this angry asshole. You're this loving neighbor. You're, you know, you go through all these different yeah. moments mm -hmm. throughout the day. And that's why I like painting is because I like who I am when I'm painting. It's mm -hmm. kind of the same curious sweetheart that I hope that I am in, you know, but, but, but you're not, but you're not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah. Mostly. yeah. It depends no, on it's which super hard to be like too. real pissed Mostly. off and painting. And paint. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I guess, yeah, you could. Sometimes that feels good though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sometimes you're throwing paint on the canvas when you wouldn't have. 
the cathartic. Yeah. Like, well, and I feel like, I don't know, personally, maybe not for all you guys, but I am not necessarily, it's not that I can't write, but I don't like to because I think words are too rigid because they have such a specific meaning to people. Mm -hmm. That's why we paint, right? Yeah, that's That's why I paint, so I don't have to, like, explain it. Mm -hmm. And you got to speak English to read the words. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But a painting can float around the whole world. Regardless Mm -hmm. of your language. And felt rather than, like you know, split apart and dissected for meaning. Mm-hmm. And I, I Art is the universal language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think also like spoken word is a lot more genuine and direct than the written word. You're right. And the written word is, you know, think about when the printing press was invented. What was that, 600 years ago? Gutenberg. Yeah. And we're <laughs> still using the s- that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Gutenberg. Gutenberg hey, can I, can I be, has okay. history lesson. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah just, get out of here. Just go. <laughs> just get up and go. <laughs> anyway, we're trying to work. integrate like this old technology, media technology, with this new one. Yeah, I know I've I've said this before, but it's like well, you're, tr- you're trying to layer this like one point perspective thing, and you put it at you make a post, a written post, right, and then. The internet is a media that is is infinitely perspective, right? It's infinite perspective. There's so many, there's seven, eight billion people, whatever. And it's just the opposite style of media. And we're trying to like mash those together. Mm. I th- Go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to interrupt, but it just makes me think about like um, traditional painting versus digital painting mm. mm-hmm. and that most of us in the in this room have stuck to the path of being a, I don't want to say traditional and in, in the sense of actually like physically working with pigments and mm. um, and preserving that practice of not having the entire process be this pixel digital pixel thing that you know, it, it has still has some kind of a substance to it in a way, and I'm not in any way taking away from digital art, but there's something to the practice of like mixing paint, yeah, and rearranging the like. Mole- I think about like changing the like molecular. <laughs> you're like mixing these different things to create an like a, a process of alchemy, and <clears throat> I just think that there's something in that. Like my father is an architect, and he was for most of his life. And I mean, he's still alive, but most of his um, career was a traditional architect and that he was still hand rendering a lot of his blueprints and drawings. And that was actually what set him apart um, from some other architects in, in the field. And over time, he had a, a team of, of architects working for him that could do the CAD and he could do it, too. But it's just not what he enjoyed as much. And mm-hmm. so anyways, I think it's really special, like what we're what we're cultivating as a community of artists and really like um putting this love and appreciation into the physical act of painting in such a digital time yeah because it's grounded and in, in embodied you know and we can all speculate like oh like there's so much novelty in technology like where's it going man you gotta be on the tip of the spear but at the same time it's like we are in human bodies that are physical we're physical earth moving around and manipulating physical objects. It's still like appreciating where you are in the present moment as mm-hmm. well. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know. Sometimes like talking about like future and technology is like almost like exhausting because nobody knows where it's going to go. And it's just kind of like, mm-hmm. but we're still human. So we're just people doing dumb shit. Like we have, to, <laughs> you know, you have to like shit <laughs> yeah. in the toilet a couple times a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so kind of like, like being, how am I going to die? Randall in his <laughs> colostomy bag. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about with uh, Andrew, our awesome uh, uh, video guy here, the, yeah. uh, about creating an artifact. Uh, a painting is an, is literally an artifact uh, that you can physically go see. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, you can push back on uh, everything you, we all just said. Though, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, digital, you can make an artifact out of a digital piece. Well, that's the thing. Is like, what would file, what, what's though. more likely to survive? Is I guess the I'm not really concerned about that. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? It's what's happening now. Like, what is going yeah. on? Well, and the argument but for I don't that think is... think about sculpture, though. Yeah. So that's, like, a weird thing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A, a weird 
I don't know, ephemeral <clears throat> point with this. You couldn't really create, you could create a, a 3D digital NFT sculpture and that can exist. Mm -hmm. But you'd being able to, to go, right, you'd you have can't to print touch it. it. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. It can't really be a sculpture. Fully experience it yeah. in its three dimensional form, there's some process of producing that digital product into something physical. Yeah. So same with painting too, like printing it to put it on your wall. Mm -hmm. All but, these things are totally possible. But but you'll notice that the cost of entry to making a digital sculpture is much lower than buying two uh, ton blocks of steel. marble. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and figuring out how to get the steel and You can start with cheap. But they're just a different experience. Well, you can start. I guess is my Yeah, my, they are. Yeah. They're just different. Like yeah. it's a different kind of experience. Because to three D print a giant sculpture would be fucking really expensive yeah. too yeah <clears throat> but i'm i'm saying for someone who's like i want to create something that will blow your mind and i don't have the resources to you know i don't even have a marble connect bro you know <laughs> yeah i guess i guess then like, you just plaster you know, welder or plaster <laughs> plaster yeah, Paris. some shit from the junkyard clay good mask <laughs> play-doh clay, clay sand well, I think <laughs> this is the importance of like preserving traditional done. arts. Like there are still OG artists in all of these different fields from like frame, like wood carvers to, you know, that are pre printed yeah. mm -hmm. digital images and like preserving that art form. I well, believe yeah. is so important as different new artists come on and want to learn those trades. Definitely. We shouldn't like cut the, the, lower levels of the scaffolding out from underneath us yeah no right <clears throat> what's so funny because at the same time is like if you just took my taste and we're talking about art but then <clears throat> if you talk about like if you would just take my interest in music is my interest in music is kind of like dude fuck instruments man like give, <laughs> give me that fucking dopest oh. fucking synthesizer bass line you could do you know what i mean like but you like the grateful dead yeah yeah i'm not listening to anybody that's playing instruments anymore son really? it's like all I feel like electronic when shit to the other side and i was like i only need real instruments <laughs> me too that's where i'm at i, I like i like both. it all yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and i like it all too but yeah but, yeah there's it's like but, but that's the thing too is that just like in music, there are things in the digital world that you would absolutely not be able to create mm -hmm. in the real world. Yeah. If you wanted to create a completely immersive space on crypto voxels or something like, you, uh, like the manpower, the cost, like let's say you wanted to create the, the pyramids of Egypt. No longer will you have to use, you know, either Aliens. ancient alien technology <laughs> or Slaves. slave labor you can just it was giants dude <laughs> duh oh. yeah okay let's talk about the pyramids <laughs> oh, like but yeah. levitation sound vibration yeah, it's, i think it's, it's to another bottom. tool too that like some people can go full and just use that tool and make amazing stuff yeah. but i think it even helps traditional artists in ways i mean i use my yeah. ipad i use photoshop totally. for stuff it's yeah. not it doesn't necessarily like I don't make digital art, but I use digital tools for art, right, my right, right. traditional art. I just like I just honestly at, like at the end of the day, like if you're expressing yourself creatively and injecting your body and your energy into love, like who gives a fuck how you do it, man? Yeah. If that's what you're doing, bravo, have at it, have fun. Who cares, right. man? Yeah. And use whatever fuck. tools that you have available yeah. to you exactly. to make art. And yeah. if that's digital, then fuck yeah. And that's part of being an artist, being resourceful. So, mm -hmm. like, what are yeah. the tools that you have immediately in front of you? You can also Stick invest in, the dirt. in good yeah. tools yeah. to make better art, and that's a wise thing to do, too. Yeah. Speaking We're, of the Grateful Dead, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a huge, a huge part of their, uh, <laughs> a huge part of their thing was like the audience versus the, the band. Mm -hmm. And like, not versus, but together with. In the, tandem. Yeah, there, there's no. Sin, think of a band station. playing on stage with no one in the audience. Uh, you know, all of these things you guys were just talking about all actually exist in the mind of the individual who's looking at it. Mm -hmm. That's a crazy thing about vision. Yeah, I'm. It, it's like yeah, you exist 
on my brain essentially on the surface of my brain because the eyes are part of the brain and then my brain kind of condenses all this information that i'm seeing down into a map <laughs> of what the world is mm -hmm. and then you overlay the language on top of that and then i'm like i'm looking at randall but like what is random from a solipsistic point of view meaning. like the whole world and universe is my dream. only <laughs> exists in your head <laughs> merely, and so that merely, applies merely. to all artwork and, and all anything like without anyone to see it like i don't know if you before if you were tom hanks on the island you know cast away you know oh i just uh, saw that last week for the first time what, what? <laughs> oh. oh my god! What the heck? You, you hadn't seen Castle? Oh, when Wilson flips away, it's like, <laughs> spoiler alert! Sorry. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, Wilson dies movie. in the end. But uh, he even made art, which is an interesting little like sidebar on that movie. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, he did make art, and it it's like blood, right? And it brought him it's life. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he yeah he also traced his his wife's face on the rock, oh, but yeah. shitty drawing, um, by the way. <laughs> yeah, not very good. No hey, skills. Hey, needs not to very work technically on that. good. Come yeah. on, you <laughs> But yeah, um, <laughs> so I just wanted to point out like what, what you guys were all saying, like the, uh, the audience versus the artist. Like like if would you make art if there's no one to look at it? No. Like, no. Uh huh. So here, you know, so I totally would, would you be Randall if there was no one to look at? Well, it's hard to imagine exactly. a world That's where there's I'm no saying. one to look at but it. Like, if you boil it down to like the point of existence, would yeah. any of us like, be? I'm alone this in the world. I'm gonna do this on my wall. Me so now thinks that way, but like if I'm imagining someone who's never met another person, I like I don't know that that would occur to me. I think it's human being can't help itself but make art. Well, yeah, 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 but in some way you do. I wouldn't spend like a hundred hours, hours on a day page. Yeah. <laughs> making art right. yeah. if there Without, were no right. one to yeah. look at yeah. it. You wouldn't would, make it a job. I would have to be go walk around. And yeah. And <laughs> of course, I would build things. Maybe that's art. That's art, right? Yeah. I mean, if you had the free time, you would probably make art for yourself. I mean, I would, but I'm saying it wouldn't be it. It wouldn't be at the level of because, like, it's it's for other people to enjoy. All of this is for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Dot com. No, but I think if you were <laughs> you a, also be you. If, yeah. you. If you were, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think if if you were alive fifteen thousand years ago, and you're just scraping by an existence, you may find a little rock or a seashell or something, right. and sure. you would put it uh, on the on the shelf as you walk in to your hut, mm -hmm. yeah. right. and you'd see it, and you go, that thing's just neat. Yeah. Well, we also there's art. Yeah. Like you and know what I mean? Appreciating like, it. That, yeah. 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 Also, yeah. I think we call art, especially in times like that, like stuff that was important for communication or symbols right. like it was art it's art to us but to them it's functional but it's still the creation of something that holds a meaning mm -hmm. it's it like becomes, kind of art. it becomes yeah. art yeah, to yeah. us or as we would define it so i think they're making art even just to communicate with like hey this is a fire don't you know touch it or home is this way right, or water yeah. this way whatever it is i think like we it's just inherent for communication yeah. have you guys ever seen artist conch mushrooms yes no i think so what's this oh, yeah they have a white underbelly and when you draw on it it's like a natural like it's called the artist conch because you can draw on the bottom underside of the mushroom and the white like coating turns dark so it's kind of mm. like a magic sketch those are in like, colorado right i found yeah they're, i mean they're all over yeah, the, yeah, it's yeah, probably yeah. all over yeah. the u.s but they're cool, mm -hmm. and I think of that also because I just, I don't know, but I feel like those were communication. Those were used as, like, yeah. nature's, like, little communication mm, yeah. Yeah. Those devices were cell phones and messages back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. and say, like, this way to things because it's a very, like, quick and obvious obvious way to leave a message mm. for someone if it was around the right time. It Music, also too, the same thing. Sorry, go no, ahead. No, you go. No, well, people remembered we, music, so we would do we would get together once a year or whatever, and that's where songs came from. We're like, in the spring, over the hill, by the river, there are lots of deer, <laughs> and we would sing these like songs. I love that and, song. That's a good no, but one. if you just banger <laughs> without a calendar <laughs> and without a map and without a, there's no other way to relay this information to yeah. human beings. Mm -hmm. So we developed songs to relay vital information True. because mm -hmm. for whatever reason, your brain like will remember a tune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More than it would uh, if, I, if I sketched it out in the dirt. 
you know and yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah I don't, anyway. i'm also thinking like maybe we can't help but make art because um nature makes the most beautiful art and mm-hmm. almost everything we make is an imitation of that and even mm-hmm. like our human bodies and everything like mm-hmm. it's already mm-hmm. there yeah we're well, already a work of art in in a lot of ways you are. Yeah, I, when we were at uh, <laughs> Resonance Festival before COVID, we were at the beautiful uh, Cooper's ca- Cooper's camp, Lake Cooper's yeah, Lake Camp. Campground. Yeah, and it was a, this really epic setting to have a festival. And um, there was a, a period, maybe Sunday afternoon or whatever, where it rained uh, over the lake, and uh, it kind of shut our, down our operation. We had this big mural, and <laughs> we'd, uh, you know. Uh, we were quite high <laughs> and we were looking out at the lake uh, under a tree like trying to you know hide from the rain and I just spent three days with Crystal and Morgan and Sweet Melissa on this painting and I was looking past the painting at a giant full rainbow over the lake and then the droplets of water hitting the surface of the lake right uh, and this clouds are parting and there's like the holy hand of God, you know, sunlight coming through rainbow willow trees. And then all, uh, especially the droplets of water on the surface of the lake. And it was, I had this insane, you know, this intense feeling at the moment of like God saying, giving a heady flex, you know, <laughs> <Being> like, <laughs> he was weak. like, you, you want to yeah. see a fucking painting motherfucker? Like <laughs> here's a painting. <laughs> and I, 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 I thought about all the things that had to come together to see what I was seeing. And I, and I was like, Touche. Yeah. You, you got me. Kudos. Kudos. <laughs> I'm paying attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a pretty painting. Yeah. Do you guys think that art it, can be objectively good or bad? Um, no. Unfor- like I don't, I don't want to so. be the boss of that. No, I think I think yeah. because people's opinions are so and their tastes are so varied that it's impossible for something to be yeah. objectively good because because there's always going to be that one person's like well i don't like how michelangelo does this yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. like there there could always be that so i i think it's yeah. pretty much impossible to say anything's objectively anything mm. it's annoying to me <laughs> 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 i think it depends on what you're going for too like if right. you're looking for like a really close reproduction that's easier to be objective about yeah. Um, mm-hmm. than yeah. like soulful art, you know, that's subjective. Well, can I give my answer now? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so our, we've been on the edge of our Yeah. What does Andrew have to say? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I think that art can be objectively good, and technically, there are some artists who are just have more experience, and they're more technically able to render out the ideas in their head and put it in someone else's head. It's just like being able to speak a sentence that mm-hmm. is communicable to anybody. Right? Well, that's but, within but the context, this? though. But, that's within but, but, the but, but, context. Wait, wait, here's the caveat. Okay. <laughs> I like a lot of art that isn't, quote-unquote, objectively good. Me too. Yeah, well, like, a lot. Well, that's why I'm like, saying that yeah. that's, like, you're undoing your own definition then. Yeah. And, well... Language is really interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's like if somebody is like very technically gifted, they have all the fundamentals and they make a piece of art that's like all perfectly rendered and I see it and I don't feel shit. I'm kind of like, nah, it's not that good. Is like, that's my subjective experience. Like they checked off all the boxes of all the things, how to make a good painting, but that I don't feel shit from it. And it doesn't inspire anything in me. It's like, man, eh, you know, I don't, I don't really think it's that great. Like, does that... In the context of what so it can't translated. be objective. Yeah, yeah it unless on unless you're like, okay, I'm judging how well someone made a fo- photorealistic That's painting. What Emily was here's, yeah, what yeah. Emily's yeah. saying within a context. Mm-hmm. Yes, if you but, if you but submit if you're like, here's a, a piece of art, is objectively up to every single person. No, but if you, <laughs> if you submit a figure drawing as like I'm doing, I'm trying to make the best figure drawing. Yeah, yeah. there are brackets around that where yeah. you can say like, eh, you missed the mark. Mm-hmm. But the intent matters on whether it's good or not mm-hmm. uh, i think there's the a there's that around it and then you get into all kinds of shit with with the art world that that, that x factor of, of like soul or heart 
like can overtake the uh, technical quality. Mm-hmm. Sure, it does. But if me. you have both, like, mm-hmm. yeah. get out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you're you're a god at that point. Yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly though. Personally, I found a lot of folk art with almost no, <laughs> like, there's no training or anything in it, no fundamentals. I found folk, folk art is like, I, I've really seen some, like, it's not technically great, but it's the been... conservative CIA. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but, like, I don't know, have any of you guys no, ever been to, mean. like, the Visionary Art Museum in Baltimore, right? Yeah. It has so, so much untrained, messy, nothing, soulful and art. It's so much better than a lot of shit I've seen, you know in the Philadelphia art museum, this perfectly made thing is like some of that, the folk art really has inspired me and touched me so yeah. much deeper and mm. it's not technically gifted at all. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, I think personally I resonate so much more with deep intention in art than I do the execution yeah. of it per se. I, I think That's for, for me, there's like, there's that for sure but there's there's something about i really admire someone who has put that much discipline and control and thought and like uh carefulness Mm -hmm. into their art and then like i said again there's like a lot of times someone can have so much funk that they can just sweep all that shit out the door and it doesn't matter well see there's different areas of technical expertise you can be you can be a master of a living life where you might not be technically to a high level as putting the paint on the canvas, but the way that you live your life and you can express yourself in a raw way. And that can be just as technical as somebody that is technically can paint with like a single hair brush and nail a portrait correctly mm. they're both there's a technique to living there's a technique to making art right and we're all kind of specializing in different areas of life so there's all these different ways of weaving the experience of life and presenting an object of like here's my experience of the world and this is what i have to share mm. so i think it's like i don't know there's different ways to be a technician i think for sure i don't know when I was in New York back in the day, there was this woman's house where she tied colored bottles to hang from a tree in her front yard. So it's a tree, and then there's like 300 different glass bottles that were just That's colored awesome. and simply tied and hanging. Yeah, yeah. And chilling in that yard was like cooler than anything I saw at Art Basel mm-hmm. uh, at the main exhibit. You know what I mean? Like. Is that is that even art what she did? But it's like yeah, mm-hmm. it's like it, it, super intensely moving mm-hmm. space creation. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then you know, yeah, you go into some room and then I don't know what was it? it was a shopping cart full of garbage in this giant white room at Art Basel, and I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. That's, we're all <laughs> buying garbage. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> you know? no way, you know, oh, yeah. Uh, I like the lady's yeah. house with the with the bottles, like uh, uh, mm-hmm. more than more than that other heady art. I don't know. No, I I get it. There's that other end of the spectrum where it's like, there's a guy in a suit in this giant whitewashed warehouse gallery space and there's all this like stuff that you look at that is neither soulful nor technically Mm -hmm. anything (laughs) and you're just and the guy has to come in and explain to you that well this artist is uh he's he's portraying the uh, downfall of the patriarchy as as technology and <laughs> new linguistic structures what and you're just like makes what? Me sad. some yeah. of those explanations are dope though some and you got to give it up the like, explanations are better than the art though sure you might but as you well to, just go on a speaking tour at that point the blue chip <laughs> art world though we're not even like at the bottom of the staircase no. <laughs> I mean, like no. it's a we're it's a money room. laundering system for Which is great. Worldwide money laundering system. It has nothing to do with, like, actually making art, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, the stuff that goes on on auction at Sotheby's and shit is... Yeah. It's not what we're doing. Yeah. We're we're doing some more primordial shit, you know? Like, uh... And so, so, so a lot of... But there is a lot of blue chip stuff that is, like, still primordial. 
it's different than what we're doing. Sure. But sure. like, I mean, I'm trying to think of a good example. Well, it's really hard to Dip- say. Like, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, just make art, and we're who just cares? Like, yeah. We're yeah. just <laughs> born, and then we do stuff, and then we die. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was a great podcast. Okay. <laughs> what else do you have on that list, Andrew? Um, I, well, we've actually um, covered everything so far on my list, mm. oh. but that nice. doesn't necessarily mean we have to be done. Uh, I know, John, you probably have a hard out for a flight to Langley. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> to meet with... Uh, with a double I'm L. just a regular cool hip guy doing regular <laughs> just cool things. <laughs> just, you know. Looking for some regular old marijuana. <laughs> yep. Oh, wait, wait. I do have one question <laughs> that I need to wait um, until Morgan gets back in to, to okay. ask. Okay. In the so meantime, should we just, we'll just sit in silence yep. until she... <laughs> yeah, let's, let's practice some should dead air. Should we sing? Um... What was that? What was that? Uh, what was that song that you were singing earlier? Could you teach it? Oh, oh the yeah, the hill he, in you the freestyle. Oh, the deer are drinking the water. Yeah. 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 Well, it's funny to to go back to language. Um, you know, McKenna always thought that people invented language at first to entertain themselves. Mm. Like it was probably more like, and that's cool. like get it. <laughs> you know, it's like probably more about jokes and entertainment at first, and then think we realized, oh, we can ascribe meaning to the things that we need to make our lives a little bit more easy. Didn't they I, attribute mushrooms to that? Yeah. Yeah, mm, yeah he did. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say, I bet, the, I, bet, the gods. I don't know about yeah. they did, but like, I, I'm well, on Well, he did, but that. no, I think it's more than him now. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. I think, I think there's a lot of people who are like, yeah, actually mushrooms with the different sense. connections, mm. they can, you see, you realize that what you say out your mouth can mean something i bet too. early language had a whole bunch of fart noises 100 oh, percent. that was the first joke the raspberry was yeah. the first joke you yeah know? yeah like yeah. that must have cracked up a, 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 a i mean we're all people. still kind of laughing from 250,000 years ago you know if you went to your bro and said hey yeah. <laughs> whoever did that one sounded joke. like a real one <laughs> yeah that's the best joke is that the fart i ever told yeah <laughs> um Okay, so I do have one more uh, thing on the list, and then maybe we can freestyle our way out into a safe landing. Um, so with without any modesty, who is the artist that you would like to be compared to? Wait, oh. Without any oh. false modesty, what other painter would you like to be compared to? Would you like your work to be compared to? Eventually. Yeah. You mean like after you're dead or currently or whenever you're, you're saying like, what are you trying? What kind of are you trying to live up to is the question generally kind of. But like if so, what's the ultimate compliment someone could give you? Like I'm proud to be hopefully by the time I pass away in the uh, category of the, the, the Bay Area uh, poster artists from the psychedelic 60s, Stanley Mouse and, and, and those guys. I feel like I have a sort like them a sort of blue collar roll them out, you know. But also uh, after a few decades, socially accepted. I'm not going for the heavens on my art, you know. I, but I, I I I like that. You know, like the whoever made the Santa Claus from the Coca Cola ads in the 1930s. Norman Rockwell. Well, no, but he's in the same <laughs> wheelhouse. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm happy with, with, with knowing that my shit went down with that, you know, the, I think, um, if someone said like, you're, you're, you're as good as Stanley Mouse, I'd be like, thank you. I, I feel like I did something with my life, you know? Nice. Yeah. That's enough for me. That's a hard question. Yeah. Really hard question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> They're like heavily inspired by different people and everything, but I just well, who says Michelangelo? <laughs> on yeah, that, you know, like yeah. I mean, Da Vinci. I'm just <laughs> trying to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's hard too because then it's like, wait, well, what are we? You know, what do you mean live up to? Does that mean like reputation or right. the, the state of their I, their yeah. life? Are you asking who our hero is, or maybe? Yeah. 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 That 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 might be a more answerable question. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know. Ah, God, man. Because it's like, a, as far as like living artists, you know, I'd probably say somebody like Alex Gray, right? It's the obvious mm-hmm. answer for a psychedelic artist. Yeah, yeah. And very inspired by somebody like that, but I don't aspire to be him or be recognized in the same way as him whatsoever. You know, it's like you take influence from a, a lot of different artists and then create your own context and say, well, no, if I could look at any artist and they were the ideal of what an artist was, then why the fuck would I even do it? So I'm trying to like mm. build my own thing and my maybe build my own style of art born out of inspiration, own style of community and all that. And I hope it manifests in a way that like, I don't know. It's like, to have some sort of original take on what it is to be a human and an artist integrated in society. And then just, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a tough one. man. I, I see us like the impressionists, you know, if I can recant my answer, I'd like to be Pizarro who like through the impressionist shows yeah, yeah, yeah. and nobody knows, everybody knows Monet and Manet and, 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 you know, Van Gogh and everybody, but nobody knows who Pizarro was. And he, and he was the fucking, guy he was, he was like yeah he, he he was like hey we're having an art show guys come on over and his paintings mm-hmm. are dope too but um i keep uh there's wonderful impressionist documentaries by waldemar janusek on youtube all available please look them up uh good luck spelling his last name but the, the <laughs> um i i see us as the impressionist the more and more i like look into them and their direct lineage to psychedelic art is actually pretty straightforward oh like, yeah they're yeah. the shit uh and I do see us like like them a little bit, maybe. But we're in a new world where 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 you know there won't be any more Beatles or Michael Jacksons anymore. Like so, our little in our little pocket uh, of the multifaceted <laughs> Godhead that's you know got all these pockets. I I think impressionism. If we can if we can like reach the level of the impressionists, uh, that would be pretty cool. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know. I Your question brought up for me um, that I've just been really focused inward. And when I think about like some sort of like legacy or like like what I want to leave behind, it's really more about like how I affect and interact with the people I'm surrounded by. And totally. um, just like wanting to leave people better than I found them and be like a loving and compassionate presence um but i also really love frida kahlo <laughs> <laughs> there we go yeah i resonate with that a Frida's lot like i don't give a yeah. fuck about my legacy it's like i just want to maybe yeah, be nice. also, like, beautiful it, life. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah well it's not even ev- like a legacy i think well for me what this brings up is like oh what um is like more of levels of success and lifestyle mm-hmm. so like like when I think of, oh, who would I want to be? It's more like, well, what is their life like right now? And and mm. does anyone's fit what I would want mine to be? And mm. and I don't necessarily know. Like, I think there's a lot of artists I look up to, of course. But, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, it's hard to say yeah. what exactly. Maybe just in terms of, of your work. Yeah, and that's, that's hard too, like, of my yeah. work. Like, it, I feel like it's such a, a mix of, it's its own thing but it's also a mix of so many things that it could go in a lot of directions and i feel like it might still yeah so i don't know where i'd want to be i do know that i want to at least whatever it looks like where i can sustain myself comfortably for the rest of my life and Mm -hmm. and make people feel good um but really i don't i don't need to necessarily be like recognized on the street or something i just want to make a living you know yeah. it's not well, yeah, said, well, yeah not necessarily yeah. remember but um, all right well fuck yeah. that question <laughs> no 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 it's a hard question no. because by, by the there's way. so many influential <laughs> artists yeah and, like so there's many. so many kind of like things to work up to but then um it's a hard, just a hard question because it's like do you you know i don't necessarily want their life or, or right that goes right yeah. 
Well, that was a lot of uh, false modesty, guys. I really <laughs> 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 thanks for that. <laughs> what well, almost like goes back to the, that context. God, I'm sorry, right? we're terrible. <laughs> no, you're great. <laughs> those are all correct answers. I mean, I think those are all correct answers. Yeah, but I also <laughs> there's no wrong Paolo answer to that question. Yeah, Martino I, Hoffman's work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I love. Mm-hmm. I just heard just how it's transformed through our whole she's life. An angel. It, it an makes me person. the question made me think of. Uh, Frida not because like I want to have that reach but because like I love the way um, she represents like her inner journey and like pain and feeling and like chronic pain and all of these like themes that I'm sort of grappling with too and I would like to make art that makes someone feel like seen in that way right right Emily, have you always had that tattoo? I just got it yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah. New tattoo. It kind of looks like I'm it's like, always been I'm there, not, though. I, I don't mean like, to... I've checked out your titties a lot, <laughs> yeah. and I so don't remember. I am so excited. Oh, come on. She's my new fave. No, but I... I, I I, yeah, oh. that's amazing, dude. It I, looks beautiful. I'm sorry thank you. it took me this long to, to I'm so excited. Thank you for it's noticing. Crazy. It's it very like it red. Like it's it, very. Yeah, yeah. I'm allergic to adhesive, and <laughs> they put a bandage on, and now I'm having a reaction. Oh so. <laughs> well, maybe you'll get two tattoos for the price of one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> scarification. <laughs> so cool. All right. Um. Yeah. Sorry, Andy. That last one. No, yeah. Sorry. Right. <laughs> sorry. I mean, I'm gonna go with Dolly. I mean, straight up. Straight yeah, there you, that would have been a good answer for everyone. Well, he's also like the first art that I saw where I was like, I mean, I was maybe eight. Yeah. And I was mm-hmm. like, my dad had a book, or he brought home a book or something, and he showed it to me, and it just blew my mind. And that's that's what I'm going for. I yeah. mean, I mm-hmm. think most of the time, MC Escher comes to mind mm-hmm. too. Yeah. We share a birthday, by the way. Really? Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. For everybody who's yeah. concerned about that, uh, I, I, yeah, like you want your art to be impactful, yeah. right? Or yeah, or you just see it and you're and it expands it tricks the way your, you think about it stuff. tricks your eye and you're like, mm. what, what's actually happening here? Which Have I you think seen is the documentary what reality with uh, M. C. Escher, where like a lot of his work is actually attributed attributable to this father and son math, math, mathematician team mm. who like dug his stuff and then they were like, yo, do you know about this, uh, you know, algorithm? And like, they, they fed him a lot of like uh, uh, his mathematical interlocking stuff. Do you, do you know about oh. this? Like, it's pretty crazy. Like he, he was sort of a collab yeah. with this other, this, this which is great. I think that's great. Team. Nerds yeah, behind yeah. the scene. Crowdsourcing art <laughs> yeah, is really yeah. cool. It's like comedians do that all the time, you know. They're like, For sure. "Here's a bit, feel free to use that on stage." Yeah. It's like, why don't we do that? <laughs> yeah, well, well, I we, think do we do that. We, we do all we the collab time. all the time. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah, yeah like yeah. now you can use that. And and John and Blair have a occasional team thing going on. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got nothing else written down. Wow. You got well, so did you guys like Dune? Uh, <laughs> 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 um, I guess we'll wrap it up. What yeah. do you guys think? Sounds good. Yeah. See you later. Is everybody satisfied? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm, Parting we, words. John, John you got more. any uh, propaganda you need to <laughs> say to the mic? Um, Ask us about any of Love yourself <laughs> and then love other people too. Yeah. And yeah. if you know where any. <laughs> <laughs> if, you could, if you know where I can get any large quantities of illicit drugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hope people yeah. get this joke. I really do. <laughs> I mean, you would think that like the context of us laughing after every time it makes we it say this. Seem like it's not, really it's not a joke. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Everybody, you want to sign? Do, say something special at the end. Morgan, go. Oh, thanks guys for, for <laughs> coming and listening to us. I'm terrible on the fly, so I love you and and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest. So these guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was awesome. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, again, make art every day. Thank you so much for watching this. All the way, those of you who made it to the end, and uh, we all love each other. And I hope you find a family like we do too. If you come to Colorado, shoot us a message. Peace. <laughs> John, you already said your thing. <laughs> <laughs> no do it again you can say something uh love yourself <laughs> <now>. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess like uh, <laughs> oh, 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 you know, love yourself. Love yourself. Like love yourself. Thanks for listening. You know what I mean. Uh, do your best to be a good person. I'm going to just say um, love you and God bless the weirdos. <laughs> I'm going to go last. Um, get back they, here. Stay true to who you are in your heart of hearts and be good to those that surround you. Know that everyone is living their own journey and right where we're supposed to be yeah. life's a garden dig it <laughs> <laughs> bloom where you're planted <laughs> but move to a cooler you got place this. um we're cutting Love all goes. that out <laughs> <laughs> <Love. laughs> die cry hate <laughs> be calm and carry, carry on Ca- oh that's oh. so much better be the change. <laughs> <laughs> Wake Make up to find out. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be funny. This is like, uh, yeah, we could do five minutes of platitudes. <laughs> just close the show like that. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for listening and for supporting this project and for giving it any attention at all. Um, really appreciate you. And I really appreciate you five and everybody we in the room right now. Love you. Yeah. Love you. Thanks for having Andrew us. Andrew RTAF. Subscribe to my Patreon. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>Thank you again for listening to another episode of RTAF podcast. If you are interested in supporting the Patreon, that address is patreon.com slash RTAF podcast. And I want to thank all my patrons you guys keep this engine running i couldn't do it without you go over there and check out the tiers i have available includes video uh, guest suggestions uh, patron only posts and some merchandise thank you again for listening please rate review subscribe do all those little things that help get rtaf into the consciousness of more and more people yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.